With the Falaise Argentan gap closed, utter confusion reigns within the encircled German 7th Army. After mercilessly pounding the crumbling enemy ranks with rockets and shells, Canadian infantry move in to capture the remains. Caution is necessary because the enemy still shows his teeth. Occasional futile counterattacks still are attempted in an endeavor to break out of the hell on earth. Most of the men are only too eager to give up. Russians pressed into labor services give our men valuable information regarding enemy positions. Nazis are then blown out of their holes with machine guns. Soon, a steady stream of prisoners pours in as the pocket is chopped up into ever smaller groups. Officers question prisoners on the fly before routing them back to the nearest prisoner of war cage. Over 150 were captured by one Canadian, Private E.H. McAllister of Hamilton, Ontario, who rides herd in a captured Jerry Jeep. When all the counting has been done, the Falaz pocket has yielded between 42 and 45,000 prisoners. They trickle in groups back in the lines of communication to the first large concentration area, which is at Cor. There, they are documented. They are then left to await the next stage of their journey. One 13-year-old Ukrainian works as stable boy. A German doctor bandages a cut finger. With supply lines cut and food non-existent, some of the Jerry's haven't had anything to eat or drink for several days. Ravenously, they eat whatever's handed to them by their Canadian captors. And now, they're away on another lap of the journey. The next stop is army, and from there, imprisonment for the duration.